Hello again, Steve here. Talk about a somewhat rare topic in baseball, uh, bunting. Uh, now for the obligatory dad joke, uh, there's actually two types of bunting in baseball. Uh, I'm actually here to talk about the one on the right. Uh, this is a bit of a follow-up to a recent video I did about a game from the late 70s called Batter Up by the Astra Game Company. Uh, I'll also talk a little bit about Sports Illustrated Baseball because there's a lot of interconnection between those two games and then uh, also Stratomatic. So with that, um, maybe the next step to talk about is bunts themselves. And I found this article online that talks about the prevalence of bunting and, and naturally uh, whether bunting is a good idea. And I found this chart and this is the average uh, sacrifice bunts per game going back to 1945. And uh, this tells me a few things. One is they were always a bit, bit rare, uh, just on a rate basis. Um, then, of course, with the advent of the, uh, the uh, designated hitter in 1973 in the American League, I think that's probably part of the reason uh, why there was a drop-off. But then uh, you can see there was a steady decline, and then in more recent years, a sharp decline, and that's likely to be um, declining even more uh, now that the National League has the designated hitter as well. So that's important context. I think the, the other context, one of my friends said recently that probably one of the features that's least utilized in in tabletop baseball is the bunt, um, probably just due to managing styles and so on. And as a result, I don't think people focus too much time on it. And that was really my goal is to not focus too much time on it. Um, but, you know, I couldn't resist. And so here we are. Uh, what really led me here, and I'll talk about this, is uh, I, I built a rating spreadsheet for the Astra batter up game. And I started realizing that the bunt ratings that I was assigning were nowhere near aligned with the original game, and so it might require some tweaking. So let's get started. Um, let's start with Sports Illustrated. Um, they basically had uh, two bunting ratings that they could assign to, to a player. It was either a green star or a red star, and you see that on the left side of this page. And so um, a pretty simple chart. The dice rolls went from 10 to 39, and if you know anything about Sports Illustrated, they had special, special dice, and um, not every roll between 10 and 39 were uh, of equal value. In fact, the, the mid-30s was the highest likelihood, followed by the mid-20s, and then, and then the rest. So um, what, I, what I decided I needed to do is actually take this chart, and it's pretty obvious with the greens and the yellows and the reds, but basically go into uh, Excel, summarize the, the chart, um, assign the right values based on the disproportionate probabilities, and uh, come up with, with percentages, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, the one interesting thing on this bunting chart is they had something called 2K. And as best I understand it, it, it basically says the bunter um, fouled off two strikes. So then you need to decide whether you're going to swing away or whether you're going to try to bunt again. In this analysis, I treated those 2K rolls as just re-rolls, and then I assumed that that the resulting re-roll got resolved either uh, in favor of a, uh, well, actually I just ignored them and used the basic relationship of, of the, the successes, which are green, or the failures, which are, which are F. Um, I had mentioned the uh, Astra game. Um, they had their own bunting chart, but it was quite sophisticated in many ways. So one way is that there were three bunting ratings, not two. But in terms of the result chart, 
the the bunting rating was a factor, but the lead runner's speed rating was a factor as well. And it turns out that it was a big factor. And so I went through and coded the entire sheet here uh, with success or failure. Um, you see all these numbers, they correspond to the result sheet, which there are 25 unique results on this sheet. Um, some of them are pretty straightforward, I would say. Uh, two interesting things I found is one is uh, result number 60 is identical to the 2K result in the Sports Illustrated game. And I've, I've commented before, but uh, it is entirely clear that part of the design of the, of the batter up game came from Sports Illustrated, starting with, with the game engine. Um, interestingly, as best I could read in the, in the rules and instructions, they really don't define what you do if you roll a 60 on the sacrifice chart, but um, it's, it's clear it's, it's the same thing as Sports Illustrated. Um, the other interesting thing is, um, which one is it? I think it's, uh, hold on, bear with me. Um, I was going to say 64, but um, anyways, I, I don't remember which one it is, but they actually have a, a rule on here. I think it's 67, actually where batter is automatically out on interference and the runners hold. Uh, that, that brought to mind the famous bunting incident with Ed Armbrister in 1975 World Series, where um, Armbrister purportedly interfered with Carlton Fisk on a bunt in front of the plate. Uh, ultimately, the umpires ruled that it wasn't interference and arguably it, it changed the the nature of, of, of that particular game uh, in, in any event. So, you know, in the context of kind of like rare plays, I'll give uh, Batter Up uh, some credit here in terms of what they've done. Um, so, um, as you see at the bottom of this page here, uh, they, they had the equivalent of that 2K, which was roll, roll number 60. So, again, I took... The entirety of that batter up chart and well, it's cut off here but I I did the same analysis uh, that I was talking about batter up uses dice rolls 1 to 30 but the the uh, probability distribution is, is identical as you see in the in the gray in the, in the middle here so um, with that uh, what you know what's the answer uh, what, what do we take away from this so, um, I summarize the results, and if you look at Sports Illustrated on the top, a green bunter, by my calculations, has a, almost an 80% success likelihood, and a red bunter has just, just below 60% uh, likelihood. So some differentiation there. One can argue whether two, two ratings are enough. Um, I think maybe they are actually. Um, batter up. So there's there's basically six, nine combinations. Um, and what you see here, interestingly, is um, the if you if you just think of you know batter up, I would say, uh, or, or Sports Illustrated, I would say that the G rating. Um, that they have really kind of corresponds to the green rating in Sports Illustrated and the red rating kind of corresponds to um, to the M rating loosely and then N must be reserved for people who hardly hardly ever bunt it. Um, the problem I had in, in analyzing batter up and, com and creating my spreadsheet and granted I just took a shortcut from some earlier earlier sims is I started re-looking at some of the cards and did a, a very sophisticated analysis which you see here um, apologies but um, basically I went through all the 1976 National League cards and for every non-pitcher I made a note of what bunting rating they had and as it turns out M is very very common 
um, and then uh, somewhat of a normal distribution, but there were some good and then some not so good. Um, and most, most teams um, had the same profile. I would say the, the Pirates, who were known to swing the bats, actually had a lot of ends. And the Reds, who found any way to manufacture runs, um, had a lot of good bunchers. But you can see there's a clear distribution here. And, um, you know, um, the other thing I did is, is for the teams that, that we've created cards for, um, you can see down on the bottom here, uh, I only have four good bunters out of those five teams. Uh, a few more medium bunters and all the rest of the people are, are ends. So clearly this is something I'm going to have to tweak in the, in the rating spreadsheet. Um, so getting back to this analysis, um, the other thing I'll point out is, uh, you know, who, what is the average runner? And you would think maybe two and three is the average runner. Uh, it's probably somewhere between one and two and two and three. Um, so it just looks like there's a lot of conservatism built into this, um, spreadsheet and probably all the, all the, you know, all the, I guess I would say the, that it would explain why, you know, a lot of the ratings are either good or medium in this game for bunting. Um, just as a little frame of reference, um, I went into baseball reference and looked at the 1976 National League and the average success rate in bunting um, was 79%. And then I also calculated two medians, one for anybody that had five or more attempts and there were about 100 batters there that had that, they were 82%. And then anybody that had um, 50 or more plate appearances, um, which was almost 250 batters, um, their success rate was 83%. So um, that gave me some perspective as well on, on this. The other, the other thing I did is I went into baseball reference and for the same year, 1976, I sorted all the Bunters or all the all the batters by the number of successful safe hits, sacrifice hits, and um, first of all, you see that a lot of these are are pitchers, which which makes sense. And um, I I need to stop and and oh need to keep going here actually. Um, and um, the other thing I noticed is for these high bunters, they had pretty high um, success percentages. So sorry for the interruption in the background. Um, last thing I wanted to do is go ahead and, and compare this to Stratomatic. And so what I did was um, pulled up the basic Stratomatic bunting chart. And um, it just looks like this. And so I did the math as to the success right there. And then I also pulled up what I believe is the advanced chart. And you can see the success rate goes down as you go to the right on the rating scale. And then someone on Facebook actually showed me what they had done in terms of um, success rates on bunting for uh, the super advanced game. And there's some nuances here which I'm not equipped to talk about, but in any event, um, that, that's available on uh, one of the Facebook uh, homebrew uh, groups. So with that, what you ended up with here is these types of success rates. So 72% um, Stratomatic Basic, um, an A bunter um, with the infield back is 92%. Um, and you can see it goes, goes on down, but clearly a higher scale than, uh, than the batter up scale. So, um, I hope, hope you found that interesting. I, um, I know I need to go back and, and tweak my, my rating system for, for batter up. Um, and so that's, that's 
what I'll do. Thanks for listening. Bye.